All right. Well, welcome to Overcoming. I'm Pastor Devin. I'm John Hay. And we're here to help you overcome things in your life. And uh, we've been doing this class for a couple of years now. And uh, John, do you have any idea what I'm going to talk about? Uh, am I supposed to have that ideal right now or not? Since we kind of just did a... <laughs> Practice well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were supposed to, we actually did this once before, but we had some sound issues, so we we're doing it again for you tonight. And, and uh, so, uh, what we want to talk about is the number one thing if you're going to overcome something in your life. Now, whether you're the addict, and remember, addicts can be lots of things, they don't have to be just drugs and alcohol. There's addicts of having bad relationships, uh, lying, uh, reputation, uh, just temper. There's a lot of different ways we. We become addicted to things in our lives. And, uh, and this is important for them. If you're going to overcome addiction, you got to have this. And if you're the person trying to help someone in your life who's overcome addiction, you got to understand this above all else. That the number one thing that needs to come across, that the addict needs to know, that the person trying to help the addict needs to show, is the addict is loved and in a safe place. Yesterday in church, we had a uh, we had Children's Day. We celebrate our kids, our teens, and all the things that we do. We do a lot of kids' events here because we know that they're really important. But we also realize that you know God never calls us adults. No, nope. He calls us kids, children. You know, we're always God's children because He knows that well. We, we do dumb things and we do all kinds of things like that. And God understands that He loves us anyways. Uh, and then we have a speaker who was uh, Sharon Jonet. She goes to our church and she runs the local We Care Pregnancy Center. And she was talking about her life experience. She was 19 years old and she had made a mistake and she got pregnant uh, out of wedlock. And uh, she, did, she said she did some things she probably shouldn't have done. And she went to her home church on a Sunday. And the pastor's wife came up to her and said, You know what? I don't think you should be coming to church events anymore. You know what? I'll tell you a couple things. First thing I'm going to tell you is that pastor's wife was not a pastor's wife at that moment in time. Second of all, if that's what that church believes, that church is dead wrong and isn't a church. Just because someone calls himself a church or a pastor doesn't mean they are. You know them by their fruit. She was devastated. They didn't want to go back to church. And then she was invited to another church in town. She felt ashamed. She felt guilty going. You know, we, we, when we fall into addiction, we know that we abuse others. We know that we take advantage of others. And we feel guilty about it. Both John and I have had addiction. We've been there. We understand what that is like. And she walked in that door, also having that experience at the other church. And the pastor's wife at this church saw her and, and asked her how she's doing. She said, oh, I, I, I'm just... And she basically said how bad of a person she was. And the pastor's wife said, no, you're not. God loves you. We all make mistakes. God wants to know. God sees who you could be. She says, what do you need? And that pastor's wife took Sharon to all of her Lamaz classes, all of her doctor's appointments, even there when the child was born. Now, you can remember the situation, you know, Sharon, she had something wrong, but, you know, what about the guy? You know, the guy, he, he totally bailed on the situation. And, and we can be vindictive as the church, and we can see somebody as an addiction. Why are you like that? I mean, you should be better than that. Mm -hmm. That is like the worst thing to tell them that. Because, you know, we all have something we can be better at. You know, Jesus says in the Bible, you know, before you try to get the speck out of someone's eye, get the plank out of your own eye. You know, we got to be able to do that, you know, get, and say, hey, you know, I'm going to look at them the way Christ looks at us. You ever felt that way, John? Yeah, and that's, it's the unconditional love that we come down to, and the unconditional love that Jesus can give us is the most powerful thing that can help us through whatever we're going through. But when we're stuck in our addiction, we can't get through it that way because, like that log you're talking about, well, how am I supposed to pull that log out of my own eye whenever I don't even know how to do it? Like, and because I'm so stuck in this addiction and I can't see it. And uh, so, if you, if when you're sitting there, and you know, I, we're we're very very smart people. When an addiction, an addict, or whatever, and when you're in your addiction, you're really smart. You really know how to get through it. You really, uh, and your mind tells you, like, hey, this is how you're going to do it, and you can almost play it all out. But the part is we don't know how to play it out to where we can get better. And then, then we had that addiction just keep on covering it up and keep on covering it up. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to fill that hole. And that hole in us and ourselves is only for Jesus himself and God himself and that Holy Spirit himself. And we feel like we're less than and we, we, can't, we can't bring ourselves to because we're so bad and that we, we that log that was in our eye and everything else. And how can I? How can I? And, and it's very, very simple. We chase, we chase the, 
the addict and he chases whatever he's addicted to. We chase that. And instead of, if we were chasing Jesus the way that we were chasing that, it would the, the high that you would be looking for, the happiness, the joy, the peace, the, the everything that you're searching for in that addiction is ten times better than what you could ever imagine if you chase Jesus. Now the key there is that unconditional love. And that's what... Because people say, well, I love the addict. Or the addict's looking for love and they don't find it, so that's why they fall more into the addiction. But what you got to understand is, is you will never, ever, ever, ever compare it to the love God has for us. You know, God knows each every one of us has faults, but he says, you know what? I love you anyways. You're going to do things wrong, and I'm, I'm going to love you, love you just because of who you are. And you need to understand that. And we got to look at them the way God, God always looks, he doesn't look at our past. You can't change your past. Nope. What you can do is use your past to help save someone else. And what you do is you, you, you say, I, this is what God sees me as, what I can be. And, when, and we're helping an addict. This is hard. Because when we help an addict, we, we kind of see who they are right now and who they were before. Can they really change? Remember, there's a time before you came to know Christ that others wondered if you could change. You know, we were all addicted to sin. We still are. You know, we all still do things wrong, even after we're saved. John 1, 9 says, 1 John 1, 9 says, if we, are faith, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. We faithful and just means we're sinning even after we got saved. We're, in, we're still addicted to doing bad things. Jesus says, I love you anyways. Mm -hmm. And that's what the addict needs to understand, that we're willing to go beyond that. And that's what unconditional love is. There's no conditions whatsoever. And we did a recording earlier. You talked about how you were in the car and you had this conversation. Oh, yeah. uh, and I, I really bring it home, I thought so. Yeah, I was driving down the road. And, and I, that's where I talk a lot to God himself. And I said, well, what are we doing? Like, I, I question why he chose me. Because I, I was one of the people sitting there on that couch and in the addiction. And... Uh, I'm driving and I'm talking and the way I'm talking to him I'm asking him like am I allowed to talk to you this way and he says you do know I'm the Lord Almighty and I said well Jesus is riding right beside me so he has my back on this one like I this is how I talk to God and he says are you willing to bow down to me are you willing to raise your hands up to me and shout and, I, and you know if you if you knew me before like when we sit here and we talk about this it, if you knew me before all this this wasn't where I thought my life was going. This is not... I, I thought I was going to be in a jail cell, really, is where I thought I would end up. And so I'm sitting there and I'm telling you, I, I can remember people, when I went to a church or something, I was like, oh, man, you guys are just brainwashers or you guys are just manipulators or this ain't for me, this is for somebody else. And I'm telling you, the whole entire time when I was in my addiction, this is all I was chasing. This is what I wanted out of life. And I didn't want, and, I, and the, all it did was, but the alcohol numbed me, and it made me feel like I could make it through life. When we put Jesus into your life, you get to live life to the fullest extent. To, and you get to see the miracles happen. You get to see it all work out just the way it's supposed to. And it makes it so much easier. And you don't have to chase that drug of choice or that addiction of choice or whatever. You, you literally just open up your heart and you keep on doing the next right thing and he'll keep on guiding you and as he guides you you get to grow and and it's almost like that drug that or that addiction that you're chasing but it's 110 percent better than what you could ever imagine mm -hmm. and just driving down that road and talking being able to talk to god being able to just to be able to well, have not talk to god talk with god. with him a, you know you get talked to you feel bad about it but when you talk with god he wants to actually Conversation. Conversate with you. That that's the thing you don't get about God and why they don't get it at churches yeah. and why so many churches are dead. God wants to be with us. Our last five weeks in church, God has showed up and He's proved that He is yeah. with us. Yeah. We have seen miracles, we have seen uh, prophecies, we have seen God do things that have lined up over and over again with God. We just know His presence is there. But you know, He doesn't have to be in a church. He can be in your presence in that car like He's with John, where you are right now. Maybe you're dealing with an addict, trying to help them. He is with you right now because He wants to help you help them. He is with you. And here's the great thing about Jesus, you know, about the addicts, you know, about addictions. People get addictions because they have something in their life that isn't giving them love or what they want, so they fall into this addiction. They try the drugs, the alcohol, uh, being mean to people, I mean, whatever their addiction is. And then what happens is they get out of their world and they think they're in this better world for a time period, 
And here's the, here's, here's the lore of why, why do people stay addicted? Because they like it there, because like you said, he was numbed. You're numb to what's going on, but here's the problem. The problem that you're running away from is still there. Yep. Really what an addict does, it double downs on the problem. He thinks he's escaping his problems, or she, or he, or whoever. But they're not escaping the problems, they're just letting the problems compound while they're just not dealing with them at all. Jesus says, I want to come in your life and give you the love you want, the life you want, the blessings you want. Yep. And here's the deal, I, he says, cast your burdens on him. So he yep. says, give me your burdens. At the same time, he gives you that high that never has to go away. He's also at the same time working on the problem to get rid of the problem out of your life. So you're getting a two for one deal <clears throat> rather than having two things pile upon you at the same time. God actually wants to help you get this wonderful feeling. And people say, well, feelings shouldn't be in church. Uh, whoever told you that's a liar. God made us with feelings. God has feelings. He wants us to feel something. He wants us to have a relationship. He doesn't have some mind-numbing religion. He wants us to have a relationship, and he wants to be able to take your problems and your issues, your addictions. He wants to fix it at the same time, letting you know you're loved, you're safe, you're protected. That's what God offers. But God offers it. We got to what, John? We got to accept it. <clears throat> How do we do that? I mean, I always thought it was hard to do that. I thought I had to be holier than thou. I thought I had to live up to these standards. I thought I would have to change my whole life and my whole attitude and everything else. Like all this stuff. Like I can't have fun no more. I can't do none of it. God's not going to accept me because of what I did and what I've been through. I'm sitting here today to tell you that is absolutely a lie from the devil. That's absolutely. an absolute lie from your addiction. Mm -hmm. I am sitting here, and you might even be a Christian out there with an addiction. Yeah, and addictions might, don't know that they, they happen to all of us. Yeah, they, they don't. And if you're sitting there and you're down on yourself, and you, we're, it honestly it comes back to the common sense a little bit too. We know in our hearts, we have to get true with ourselves to honestly believe that we have a problem or something's going on there that we feel. but it's really this simple all you have to do is ask just mm -hmm. ask for his son to come into your heart ask for god to guide you ask the holy spirit to dwell within you there's so much that comes with just that just asking just it's yeah. it's literally that simple it is it's that simple and, and, but why do people can't believe that because they think they gotta do something they try to overthink it yep. um i don't know what to do here's the great thing if you don't know what to do, you're at the right place. Because yep. when you don't know what to do, that means God can do what you need done. See, the problem with a lot of people when they come to God, they come to God saying, God, this is what has to happen. This is above it. And they try to set the ground rules rather than letting God be the boss. Now, that kind of scares people, too, about being the boss. Because we know an earthly boss. What's the problem with, you know, earthly bosses? You know, you might have a good boss, or bad, but the boss ultimately hires you to make him rich. That, that's, that's the reason why the boss hires employees. Or to do jobs he doesn't want to do. You know, that's that's why he hires them. God says he wants to be the Lord of your life, the boss of your life, but here's the opposite. God doesn't God already has everything. Mm -hmm. God doesn't need you for anything. That's the thing. He doesn't need you. He Watch wants you. you. Yeah. And then he wants to take care of you. He wants to be the best boss ever. He wants to be in charge of life to give you the best of the best. He wants you to live in the penthouse. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be healthy. He wants to give you all these things. But we have to say, God, I'm yours. And God will take away addiction. God will take away the problems. God will fix all your issues. Now, yes, he might not do it like overnight because sometimes we get ourselves really deep into the mud. And, you know, you go deep into the mud, you know, <laughs> when you get pulled back out, you're still muddy, okay? And, but once you're pulled out, then he can clean you off. But, there, there's, but there's still the pulling out from the, from the mud that has to take place. And, yeah, you might get a little more dirty on the pulling out process, but once you get your... Because, if he washes you off in the mud, as soon as you move, you're what? You're back in the mud. You're muddy again. Yeah, you're back in it because you haven't been out of it. Jesus can't totally clean you until he actually pulls you out of the mud. And once he pulls you out, you're still going to get muddy on the way out. But then he can take you. He can clean you. And he's the boss, and he wants to direct your steps. Why? So you can have the best life possible. That's what he wants for you. problem is it's hard for us to realize that. Yeah, you know, why is it so hard for us to realize that is because... Our love that we think how we love is totally not how Jesus loves. Mm -hmm. We cannot love. We, I, I, I feel like we can love like Jesus if we would let our, I don't know if our selfishness would let us love like he did. And 
unconditionally, like because I don't care who you are. If you look at somebody, you're probably judging them before they even say a word. Yeah, I don't think any human can actually unconditionally love someone. Yeah, like that's what I, I, I'm sitting here and, I, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling the love from him right now, and that's why I'm thinking, can I show that? I can show it a little bit, but I, until you have him in your heart, until you show, totally surrender and let him come in, and you get to feel that love, then you understand what we're talking about. Then I can show it to an extent. But to go beyond there is where that's that's that walk with Jesus. That's when letting the Lord come in. That's when the Holy Spirit's God in you and everything else. And then you get to feel it and you get to enjoy it. And I, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm sitting here today. This is not where I thought my life would be. When I was sitting there with a 30 pack beside me and I'm on the couch just in a dark room all by myself for like two years. But it, I, I swore I was going to end up in jail. I swore like I did end up in jail twice. But it don't that. When Jesus can come into your heart and God can drop you to your knees, it don't matter how big you are, it, and you feel the presence of God, there's nothing denying that after that. So let Him come into your heart. Let Him show you where you're supposed to be going. And it's really that simple. Like we just said, just ask Him. If you're sitting there, just ask Him. Bring down one of them walls. That brick that's sitting in one of them walls that you got up because you don't want to let the world in. Just open up that one little brick. That's all it is. That's all it takes. That little candle right there. Let it burn inside. And He will show you. He will guide you. And he, this, none of this material stuff could have ever fix my addiction. And, and I, I know that today. And I, it took me this long. Well, not this long. A little bit. It took everything I went through to get to where I'm at today. But I know no material thing out there in this world would have beat my addiction. There, it just it wasn't happening. I tried it all. Like, honestly. I was down to suicidal. was my last step. Like, oh, this is the only thing that could fix the addiction. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking that right now, I'm telling you, here's the way out. I did not think there was a way out. I swore to myself there was not a way out. And every time I woke up, I wasn't going to do my addiction again. I did it again. Mm. And yeah. I, same, I had the same thing. Struggled over and over yeah. again. And then I felt guilty, you know. Yeah, it's like, like guilty, that shame, that selfishness, the self-centered, all of it, the pride, the ego. But then that, un, that unconditional love that only God can only give you. God, yeah, only God can you give You can only get it from Him. And, and I, I used to listen to these people that said this all the time, and I can remember hearing it. And it's like, and then you see them go around, and it's like, man, that's not how I love. That's not how you love. Like, I don't want, and some of them, I didn't want their love that they were shown. And the other ones, it was like, wow, I wish I could get that. And then you find out maybe that wasn't the right love either. Like, it's his love is what we're searching for. And you have it. You have it inside you. He's sitting there just waiting on you to say, Please come into my life. Like it, it's right there. It's that simple. And now he doesn't want to come into your life. He wants to come into your life to fix it. Now, if you're an addict, I know that sounds. You, you gotta, but you also gotta see another. Now, we as those of us who love our family or friends who are addicts, we have to be able to portray that unconditional love as best we can. You're not gonna be perfect at it. There's gonna be days you're gonna look at that addict and you're gonna be like, "Is he worth it?" Remember this, there was days of Jesus, you know, what if he ever said, are you worth it? But here's the great thing. Jesus never ever says that question in the Bible. He says we were always worth it. Yeah, did we do dumb things? Does he call us out on that? But he never once doubted that we were worth it. Even how bad we are, he loves all of us. Every single human has ever lived, including the addict in your life, including the enemy in your life. He loves them and we show them unconditional love. That's step one. Because if they can't get that, if they can't realize that, because that's why they're at, that's why they have the addiction they have. That's why they can't overcome what they in their life because they can't realize how much better it can be. And really, the only way they're going to feel that is when they let God come in, not as a religious thing, but as a relational way. And they see it in your life, and they want to have it in their life, and that's what gets them to get over the addiction because the addiction is there. Because they think the addiction takes them away from the problem. Mm -hmm. All the addiction does is creates more of a problem. And the other problem is still there too. When true unconditional love that God gets and then he puts through other people towards that person, then they get over the addiction. Not only do they get over the addiction, the problem that causes them to go over the addiction also gets solved because God says, I solve all of your needs. Now, a great example of this is a story in, in, in Second Kings where there's this lady and she is... Um, she, she, she goes to the man of God, Elisha, <clears throat> and she goes, I, I, my husband died, I have all these debts, and the debtors are coming and they're going to sell my sons to pay the debts. 
What do I do? And so Elisha says, Go out <clears throat> and knock on your friend's doors and ask for, ask for jars and pots. And so she gets all the jars. She says, What do you have at home? I have one jar of oil. I want you to fill all those jars with oil and go sell it. So she begins to fill the, all these jars she collected. And every single jar is filled. The oil in her little jar doesn't stop flowing until the last jar is filled. Now here's the great thing about the story. She takes it and sells the oil. And she pays off her debts. And then she goes to see Elisha, the man of God. So it worked. She's surprised. And then she says, I paid off all my debts, but I got all this money left over. And Elisha says, now you can live off the rest. See, she thought that she just needed her debts paid. Problem was, once her debts were paid, in the ancient times, she was a woman, her kids were, were young, she couldn't work as a woman to make money. She went, this, I'm not saying that was right or wrong. It's wrong, actually, but I can say that. But that's just the way it was in ancient culture. And God knew that. So God not only provided to take care of the debt there, He made sure she didn't get into the same position again, even though she didn't what? Ask for that, but God knew she needed that. The addict in your life, God, when they can really get love and God takes away the addiction, He's also going to solve the other problem, even though they don't ask for it. Because he knows both problems have to be solved for them to go forward in life. And that's what God wants us to go forward, not to go backwards. Yeah, and, and we sit here and, you know, the, we just, I just keep on thinking about that, the happiness that comes out of life. Once you, I can remember being in that addiction and I thought it was fun and I thought it was making me feel better and everything else. And I was lying to myself the whole entire time. And when you let God in your life and the happiness that you can live without the worry and in the... If I would have just got out of it what I wanted to get out of it, I would have sold myself short. I just wanted to get sober. That was it. Mm -hmm. If I would have just got sobered and that was it, I, I mean... You probably would have got... A lot of people I, I, get sober. And then they go back back I, into the, I, I, a different addiction. Yeah, I wouldn't probably be sitting here today if that's all... I would If I would have got what I wanted. And... So I'm sitting here and I'm telling you this because... I can remember being that person, and if you're watching this video, like I said on the last one too, this isn't a coincidence. This isn't a coincidence that we're sitting here beside one another talking to you guys through this video thing. And it, it's not, and none of, once you come to believe the way that you need to believe, the, the real physical world doesn't really exist anymore. No. It's the spiritual realm that we get to live in, and we get to enjoy it, and we get to have the happiness that we we try for, that we want, that we everybody's searching for. Really, it's the fear that keeps us back. Mm -hmm. The fear of the unknown. I can remember that feeling, the fear of the unknown. Like how how can I how can I believe in something like this? I can't see it, I can't hear it, I can't feel it. But once you do it, and you really let them in your life, you get to feel it, you get to see it, and you get to hear it. You get to. It's every. I, I wish I could just put it in a nutshell and just be like, here you go. But if we did that, then we would be selling you short too because mm -hmm. you have to grow from where you're at and that love that comes from where you're at. When Jesus, like when you let Jesus come into your heart, he takes all that and he knows right then and there this is where the relationship starts. Like he wanted it a long time ago. But as soon as that relationship starts, there's no turning back, it don't feel like, because the power, the overwhelming power, and everything that you've been searching for in that addiction is bam, right here. And it's more better than anything in this world could possibly ever give you. And so just open up your heart, open up your mind, be willing just to, just to try. I mean, if you're sick of being where you're at, this, I'm telling you. This ain't no joke. This ain't no mind manipulation. This ain't... We don't have to be sitting here. We choose to sit here because we love our God. We love Jesus. We love what He did to us for our lives and what He blessed us with. And the only way we keep on these blessings is by blessing you guys and by giving it back to you and showing the way, the light, the truth. I mean, it's right here and it sits. And I never ever thought these words would come out of my mouth. Like... It, it, it's so it's such a miracle that I'm even sitting here. It's probably a miracle that the pastor's sitting here, and you can be sitting here too. It, it's it's not not here physically in this church and this everything. I'm, I'm talking about in this spiritual aspect of God and Jesus. I you mean, can be in it all the time. That, that relationship that you can be in, yes, all the time. 
The love that you can feel, the unconditional love that you can feel. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, start over again. And if you stay in His will and then you stay in His life, nothing can hurt you. Mm -hmm. There's no more. There's no more. The devil don't mm -hmm. even have a chance. No. Your addiction don't even have a chance. The the hatred that comes along when this world, with the politics and everything else, doesn't even have a chance. The fear of the getting fed or not having food or how am I going to pay for my kid's next meal and everything else don't have a chance. But it's the total surrender. It's not just, oh, I'm going to do a little bit until I get this little bit. Because he'll, he'll, he might give you that little bit just to help you get through. But until you literally surrender it all, and give it over to Him, then you can feel the true power of what the Lord can do. It is amazing. Yeah. Well, John, why don't you just lead us in a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank You for this class. Thank You for letting us screw up the first one because it helped us with the second one. <laughs> and uh, we love You, God, with all of our hearts and all of our mights. And just whoever's out there watching this, God, just help them open up their hearts. They know they need Your help. They understand it. But we, in our pride, in our ego, in our selfishness, won't let us open that up. So let, let's just right now, God, and whoever's sitting there, just give them the opportunity to say, I want this. I want what they have. Or I want you. I want you to come into their life. And I, then let them accept your son. Let them just feel him for that moment right there and see if they can accept him. God, you have all the power. You got all this. You are the one, the Almighty. And your son is so loved. And let them feel the Holy Spirit just push them and motivate them right now. God, that's all I pray for. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed tonight's class. And we'll be back again the sex, second Monday of uh, July. July. All right. But until then, remember Jesus loves you. We love you. And you are awesome. awesome.